at the middle of a medical education conference in the sweetest little hotel room in the middle of the Blue Ridge Mountains. My eyes were tracing over these blue and gold swirls on the dated hotel carpet while the presenters started to talk about leadership styles. And I heard one of them say the words, carnival act. Immediately, my hand shot up. Excuse me, did you say carnival act? Yeah, this leadership style is so cool. The leaders are inspirational and they create beauty and meaning. Wow, for the first time in 17 years, I actually felt like I could be a leader. Ever since I was 12 years old, I have loved science, every aspect of it, in part because I was curious, and I also had a lot of energy and a little flair for drama. Now, the last one is not my fault, okay? My mom is a vocal and drama coach, so that's on her, okay? But this meant that my talking and my questioning came across in a sometimes overwhelmingly energetic fashion. And while it made for entertaining conversation, sometimes I felt like people saw me as a woman in her terrible twos. You're too loud or too bubbly or too girly or you're just too much. So at some point I decided I would beat people to the punch and I started calling myself a carnival act, laughing off my own personality, apologizing for who I was. When I entered graduate school in physiology, the dial on that tendency got cranked up. I tried to tame my non-traditional, charismatic, extroverted wild side. I am in academic medicine now. It's time to abandon that part of me that identifies more with Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus. Huh? Because who I was did not fit into this traditional scientific leadership box. Now, leadership in this field hasn't changed much since the days of Socrates, who died, by the way, in 399 BC. Early women pioneers are presented as one of the boys. And even in the last few centuries, the message for women is this. You have to conform to be heard. You have to conform to advance. The old boys club is buttoned up, serious, intolerant of enthusiasm. Now that tone had a serious impact on my presentations, which as a faculty, I give plenty of. Okay? I pour my heart and my soul into these. And for years, I tried to cage myself. I wanted to be taken seriously. Well, that didn't work. My personality kept spilling into my presentations. And, <laughs> and time and again, my male colleagues would come to me and go, wow, you are awfully enthusiastic. If I heard the word enthusiastic one more time, I was going to scream. It made me feel like a joke. And it perpetuated this idea that if I was going to fit in as a scientist and if I was going to advance, I was going to have to change. Tone it down, box it up, grow up. I carried that belief with me from the start of my faculty career until that day in the hotel room. These presenters were presenting this carnival act in an entirely new context, not as a weakness I needed to tame, but as a strength. And all of a sudden, this energy I had been dumping into shoving myself into a box fell silent for just a moment. I can be a leader just as I am. Now, this recognition certainly did not settle in overnight, but from that moment on, the little voice in me saying, grow up, got quieter and quieter. And the voice in me saying, Heather, you have to share this with other women, got louder and louder. And I now share this across my institution with clinicians and faculty 
and students. In one particular presentation, I was talking to a room full of medical students, women, some of the faculty advisors, and I'm talking about leadership styles and the importance of authenticity. Carnival act in full glory. I'm dancing around the room, flailing my arms. And when I got done, I waited. I could hear a pin drop. And then I heard it. Huge applause, actual cheering for me. And amidst all this, my colleague comes to me and he leaned in and he said, wow, Heather, that was actually really great. I didn't know you had that in you. That should be a TED Talk. I know I'm not alone as a woman in academic medicine. Many women struggle to authentically present their strengths without apology. And it's no wonder because our exposure is often limited to professional development that benefits the institution. In science, it's all about the number of grants you write, the manuscripts you publish, how many students do you train? That is how you advance. That is really different than developing the professional, the individual, helping them recognize and grow their character strengths, diverse strengths that the institution needs. And it is time that that message made its way more loudly into science and medicine. Why? Because while 43% of faculty at academic medical institutions are women, they represent only 18% of department chairs. And of those that hold a dean's title, only 16% are women. This is a complex problem, this lack of diverse leadership in STEM. And it's not the entire story, but at least part of the problem lies in this message. Smart women don't act that way. Effective leaders don't act that way. You can't be fun and vivacious and actually have an aptitude for science, or God forbid, leadership. You're not qualified. You're just not serious enough. It took me 17 years to accidentally discover that that idea is wrong. That I can be a leader just as I am, even if I don't fit into some traditional box. Because leadership is authenticity. It's bringing your full self to a role. Leadership is authentic kindness, authentic relationship building and creativity. It's authentic energy and it's authentic diversity. And now I know that this is a diversity that academic medicine desperately needs. You and I are bombarded every day by messages that tell us we're not good enough, not smart enough, not capable enough, we're too loud based on our gender or our sexual orientation, our skin color, how we dress or how we talk, and that is wrong. You don't have to take a personality test in a hotel conference room to know this. That if we are gonna meet the demands of this fast changing world, you can't do it by being someone you're not. The leaders of tomorrow will be those who are authentic, true, to their nature. On my journey through science and research and now medicine, of all the people that I've met and discoveries I've made, the most important one is this. I can be a leader just as I am. Thank you.